computer. Okay. Hello, guys. Welcome to another session of uh, VRIT. Today is uh, the Monday, 27th January, 3.10 p.m. PST. And thanks for every, every thanks for joining. And I know today is a larger group. Uh, Monsi, did you join too? Yeah. I All right. Just I could, yes, I hear. Yes, I heard you. All right. So, you know, um, you, you probably watched the video, Introduction to SAP FICO. In that video, yes. we talked about a lot of uh, accounting, right? Uh, why we have FI, we have, why we have controlling. In FI, yeah. we talked about it's used for external accounting, okay, which is basically you are, uh, you know, reporting to somebody or institution external to the company, which is your shareholders, vendors, banks, uh, IRS, and whatnot, the government, and anything outside of the company. And then controlling, which basically talks about internal accounting or management accounting or management reporting, that is predominantly focuses on reporting to the people internal to the company. And why do you report internal? Why do you report to the people internal, internal to the company? Who are internal to the company? Your managers, right? Uh, managers, anybody. And what is their job and why they are paid, right? So their job is to improve efficiency. So improve their cost performance, improve their capital performance, improve their operating um, ratio those type of things. On the other hand, if you are filing, if you are reporting to the IRS or the tax, they don't care about your operation efficiency. All they care about is how much you make, pay me the tax, right? What's your, uh, the shareholders only care about how much you make, what's the earnings per share, what, how much share, how much bonus you are allocating, right? So that's what they care about. On the other hand, management reporting, they focus more on the operational efficiency. So this is how much I'm spending on a cost center. This is how much we are spending on a plant, building a plant, and what is going to be my operational revenue. And how many, how many years is going to take for me to amortize the cost, right? Those are the things go into management reporting. Great. So uh, those things, we already talked about this in introduction to SAP FICO video. Uh, I'm sure you watched, uh, you enjoyed watching it. Now in SAP FICO, just in accounting, um, I know there are people who know accounting more than me, but uh, just ignore if anything, I would say incorrectly. So there are four types of financial statements um, in, you know, the, the, you know, fundamentally there are four types of financial statements. Number one is your balance sheet. Okay. The next is profit and loss statement. And then next is cash flow statement, right? And then there's another one. The fourth one is you could put a pretty much anything, apportionment of uh, profit and loss, your equity, uh, share capital accounting and equity accounting and all this stuff. But uh, for the purpose of learning today, we will focus on this two, balance sheet and profit and loss statement. Okay, so cash flow statement, um, it is important, but not for today. So how many people know what is a balance sheet? So balance sheet basically talks about assets and liabilities. So let me enlarge this guy. You, you see my screen, right, everybody? Yes. Liabilities and assets. So liabilities and assets. So what happens, okay, third thing, sorry, trial balance. Okay, this is the three statement that we will see today. Balance, trial balance. So liabilities and assets. You know what's a liability, right? What's the liability? Right? So liability is something that we owe to others. Okay, very simple. Assets are something that we own and generate revenues from operations, right? And then something that others owe to us. Make sense?
Is that right? Did I say that correctly? So liability is something that we owe to others, right? For example, um, you buy, you take a loan from the bank, okay? And then even your accounts payable, right? So when you buy from a vendor, then you got to pay, right? When you buy from a vendor, what happens? You are creating a liability, right? Accounts payable. Example, loans, AP, share capital, because it's borrowed from, share capital is borrowed from the bank, from the shareholders, which means you owe to others, right? And here, as you know, again, loans given to others, right? A intercompany, accounts receivable, fixed assets, inventory, bank, balance, and so on, right? And anything more? Cash in hand. Uh, nobody will have cash in hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. This bank balance. So when I say bank, it's it's actually a part of the cash, right? It's part of the cash flow. Okay. Now, if that is the case, what is the profit and loss statement? So profit and loss statement is also called your income statement. Generally, they call it income statement, okay? What do they call it? Income statement. Um, it typically, they call it P&L, P&L, okay? Um, if you, you know, in a big company, so if you walk into a company, they often, you hear the word uh, P&L statement, income statement, P&L statement, earning statement, and so on. So those are, you know, basically mean the same. It's a profit and loss statement. As you know, income and expenses. Actually, expenses and income. Okay. And I could tell, right? So there will be a lot of expenses, as you know. Um, income, I don't have to explain. You know what's income. You know, your revenues, miscellaneous income, broker's com income, incentives earned, cash discounts earned. There are several types of income. And expenses, again, there are several types of operational expenses, overheads, right? direct and indirect expenses, right? What's a direct and indirect expenses? Did anybody know what's a direct expenses? Direct expenses, which directly contributes to the manufacturing of goods and services. Okay, what are those? Generally, we call it 3M. What is 3M? Anybody? Some of you should know. Direct material. Material. Labor. 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 Overheads. Missionary, right? Yeah. So when I say direct expenses, these are the three things should come into your mind. 3M, material, manpower, machinery, right? If you're in the manufacturing industry, in order to manufacture, what is the first thing you need? You need inventory, which is the raw materials. Then your direct labor, right? Which is the wages. Then your machinery. How do you cost the machinery? A depreciation. So those are directly contributing to your manufacturing of goods. Then comes your overheads, which is the electric utility bills. Uh, you pay interest for the loans uh, that you borrowed in order to build the plant. And then you pay the factory uh, manager salary. Those are overheads. Why they call it overheads? Anybody know why they call it overheads? They're not related to a mm -hmm. specific like, product. It's like for the mm -hmm. entire um, you know, like a cost center or a company. <laughs> Right. Why they call it overheads? Because I don't know. <laughs> um, like you know, electricity um, mm -hmm. would go to over your head. Over your head. I don't know. Is that why? Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. They're not directly attributable to 
but why do you call it overhead? In your head. Why you call it overhead? Because um, just look at this. You know, on top of your head, there's a ceiling, right? That ceiling runs across everywhere. So let's say you have a plant, you have an office building that you do pretty much everything, right? When you pay utilities, when you pay uh, the rental, it's for everything, right? You cannot specifically assign, which is correct. Your answer is correct in a way that you cannot specifically assign to a yes, certain um, operation. However, um, this runs across all your plant and the entire office building. That's called overheads. That's how I remember. Okay. You are, for example, in a company, you pay you know, the marketing manager salary. So marketing manager salary is a overhead, right? <clears throat> it is not directly contributing to the manufacturing of goods and services. However, it is so important to take the, to uh, reach the goods to the consumer. So his salary is paid, but that is not specific. He could be marketing uh, more than one product and he could be marketing more than one services and he could be performing others other you know services too so all this um, it is it is important for the operation but not directly okay that's called overheads indirect expenses make sense so overheads are called indirect expenses okay so with that i wanted to give you um you know often people with no accounting background they can they get confused with uh, what's a liability what is a um income so what is an asset what is an income so when you buy something so people so let's say you buy inventory you buy raw material people always think that's an expense right is it an expense so when you buy an asset okay inventory is an asset so people buy jewelry when you buy jewelry let's say you spend um, ten thousand dollars and buy some gold is an expense. What are you bringing in? You're bringing an asset, right? So it is an asset. So expenses is something it's already incurred, which you cannot recuperate. Correct? For example, you go and buy a pizza and eat it. That's it. It's done. That's expenses. Whereas when I buy jewelry, it is something that I can end cash anytime. I can liquidate this, right? So I put this in asset. Make sense? And then another thing you very important that people, uh, I, have, I have heard people saying they use the word cash. When you buy something, you never pay cash. When you buy something from a vendor, you never pay cash. What do you pay? When you buy a raw material from a vendor, what do you do? You buy raw material, which is an asset, right? And then you don't pay directly, right? It goes through a payment terms. So until you pay, it becomes your payables, correct? So let's take this example and break it down. So you buy raw material from the vendor. So what's coming in, Harman? So when we buy raw material from the vendor, what's coming in? Mm -hmm. The raw materials. Correct. And then you, and then what is, What's offsetting entry? So you debit the raw material, and what is the, I'll tell you why the debit and credit, I'll, I have a simple mechanism for you guys to understand what you debit, what you credit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. You are, assets of raw material is coming in, yeah. which is inventory, which is an asset. Okay, yeah. you're gonna debit the asset. Why? When the asset goes up, inventory goes up, you debit it. Yeah. So what, then, do we, what you will credit? Credit the deferrals, like accounts payable, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, you pay the, you credit that accounts payable. Accounts payable, okay. Okay, that's what everybody understand, right? Sindhucha? Monsi? Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. All right, so these are the two important, um, uh, I mean, three important uh, statements or financial statement that you will have to understand in SAP FICO. 
The third one is obviously triad balance. You know why we call it triad balance? Because um, so we have this two-way um, double entry system. Okay, why we call it double entry system? Whenever you credit something, you have to debit something, right? Whenever you debit something, you have to credit something. That's called double entry. Now, when you do that, the same hundred dollars you debit should be credited in another GL account. In this situation, you buy an asset for hundred dollars, you buy inventory for hundred dollars, which you debit, and then you credit the accounts payable account, AP account, correct? That's called double entry. Now, if you put this in the T, they call it they call it T. What they call it T? If you see any financial statement, it will be in the form of T. Right, this is called T, right? Here you'll be a debit, you'll be credit. So at this situation, um, you are debiting the assets, inventory. You'll be crediting this AP, right? Let's say hundred dollars. Okay, so when you, map, when you pass this entry, this is your trial balance. Your debit goes here and credit goes here. And end of the day, all the entries that you post goes into trial balance. When it goes to trial balance, your trial balance should match. That's called, they call it trial balance should match. In what situation trial balance would not match? The trial balance would not match in a, in, in, in a situation where they forgot to, they forgot to capture an entry, one side of the entry, make sense? Let's say they post this, this account and then they forgot uh, they, for some system error, it didn't post, your trial balance will not match, correct? I have one question. Please. So would SAP restrict that kind of entry? Like if it's not balancing, will it throw an error? It does. Okay. Yeah, that's why I put, you know, the trial balance will always match. You know, these days are gone, right? Okay. Those days are gone. Ever since they, you know, they put everything into, into computers, uh, your trial balance always match. Otherwise, the system will not post an entry into SAP, into any system, right? It checks. Before you post, it checks. And then they also built um, a governance and other things, okay? They also built in governance and other things so that people would not mess around with the system, okay? They cannot post one-sided one, one, uh, one -sided entry, okay? The Snowbase system will accept it. That's a good question. Any questions so far? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Any suggestions? Uh, Jay, uh, can you please uh, explain balance again? <sighs> Sorry, what's your question? Uh, can you uh, the trial balance? Sure. So, Let's do this, okay? Um, when you start a business, so what is the first thing you do? Anybody, what is the first thing you do? Kamala? Uh, what's it, Vijay? So when you start a business, right? What is the first thing you do? What do you need? We need to have opening balances of the bank. You need what? This plan. We have to open balance, have uh, a like you know bank account. Okay. And Correct. have balance in it. Um, that's good. <laughs> that's good. The balance in it. Uh, where the balance come from? Investment, capital. Okay, great. And who gives the capital? The shareholders. Correct. So shareholders, um, they are giving money, right? So who are the shareholders? Is uh, the, in, uh -huh. Investors, partners. Correct, and that's a liability, right? Yeah, that's a liability. Share capital is a liability, yeah. correct? Now, when you, start, when, you, when you start a business, the first thing ever you do is you have to have a capital, right? Now you have a capital in your bank account that I want to set up business and start, start a business. Now I have to transfer my share capital or you know borrowings from a friends or in terms of you know whatever it is i need to bring this money to the business 
to invest. Okay. So first thing you have to do is you have to create a share capital, right? So when you do that, when you bring money inside, what is, um, what is, what is, what is coming in? The loan is coming in and then your bank balance is going up, right? Your bank balance is going up. What is a bank? It's asset, right? So you debit the debit bank, credit, share capital, right? Yeah. So let's put this in the trial balance. So debit bank, so trial balance is nothing but you take all the debit and credits, okay? And put this in the T, debit all goes here, credit all comes here. That's called trial balance. Trial balance is nothing but one stupid statement where it just takes all the debit goes to debit side, takes all the credit things and goes to the credit side. It's very simple. That's called trial balance. If the trial balance matches, that means your entries are correct, right? Nothing is missing. So for example, this situation, let's put $1 million. So your debit bank, so this goes to debit side, which is the bank, right? And then here, share capital, you credit it. Okay, so if this guy will always tally, no matter what, how many entries you make here, this guy will always tally, this is called a trial balance. So let's work on the second, another. Come on. Can I say something, Vijay? Please. Okay. Yes, please. Um, basically, the trial balance, so it's the list of all the ledger accounts mm -hmm. and uh, with the balances in the ledger accounts. Mm -hmm. If it has a balance of uh, debit, then it will be on the debit side of the mm -hmm. trial balance. Mm -hmm. And if it has a credit, it will be on the credit side of the trial mm -hmm. balance. That is correct. So um, that is correct. So far, are you clear, Shaz? Yes. Okay, let's take another entry. So you have the bank now, okay? You have the share capital now. What do you do with the share capital? It's already the bank now, right? So you have the bank, you have the money in the bank. So what do you do next? So you have a business, what do you do next? Invest the money. Where? Buy materials, machineries, and everything. Correct. So you're going to buy a machinery first. Okay. Correct. So you buy machinery. So you debit machinery. Yes. And then you credit the AP. Correct. So you bought the machinery. Machinery is fixed assets, right? You debit the machinery and then you credit the AP because it's payable, correct? Yeah. So now debit goes here, machinery. So let's say you spend $20,000. Is that right, Kamala? Sorry, Vijay. Is that right? Sorry, I lost you. Right? So this guy will always tally, right? So every entry in a day, let's say you make all these entries, end of the day you make 1 million entries or 2 million entries in a day, they all have a debit and credit and they all have the equal debiting and matching credit. Let's say you're posting FB01 documents, right? A lot of FB01 documents, as you know, anything that you debit, let's say you debit an item for $1,000, you also credit the same for another account for $1,000. Otherwise, system will throw an error, right? Right? Yes. Right. And then after that, so you have missionary and then you're paying rent, for example. So rent is debit, sorry, debit the rental because of the expenses. Okay. 
and then you credit, let's say bank. Why the bank money is going out, okay? So now debit is rental, expenses, $1,000 and here bank, $1,000, right? So this is a trial balance. So your debit and credit should always match. Your total debit balance and your total credit balance will always match. If, if, if some, let's say something that's a technical glitch or this entry did not go through, your trial balance doesn't match, right? But it won't happen. It will never happen. Okay, so, so far you know what's a trial balance, sorry, what's a profit and loss statement? These are three important statements. Balance sheet, profit and loss statement, and trial balance. Now here comes the important part. What's time, 3.36. What is the debit? What is credit? Why we have a debit? Why we have the credit? What do we credit? What do we debit, right? What if we do vice versa? What if we don't really do well? If we don't know what to do, what a debit, what a credit, right? So far it's easy to follow. Yes. So far it's easy to follow? Yes. All right, so the next comes, uh, what to debit and what to credit, right? So this is a little, um, maybe not very fancy, but this is the way I taught lots of people. Um, I actually challenged my previous, um, one of my company, um, I had a, uh, my manager, he has a strong IT background, no financial background, no business background. When we go to the meeting, um, he always, get very intimidated because if we, you know, he, he's leading the finance team. Just imagine he goes and talks to the corporate finance people and that people and, you know, they always talk about how oh, this comes here, debit and, I mean, not generally debit and credit, but it is important to know, right? So he always get intimidated. He tells me, see, um, I mean, he always feel really bad and very uncomfortable. Then I told him, boss, don't worry, I'll teach you accounting in seven minutes. He said, uh, really, try on me. So which I did. <clears throat> So, so what do you debit and what do you credit, right? So we know this guy. Debit, right? Anybody know what is EBIT? Earnings before interest and tax. Okay, that's fine. That's not, that's not what I wanted to say. That's not what I want to say. Credit. So you have debit and credit. So what do you debit, what do you credit? So this is what you remember. What about this guy? This is debit, right? Yes. Is it debit? That's debit. And this is? Credit. How about now? Also credit, right? It's true. Cool. Yeah. So debit. D stands for debit, E stands for expenses. Okay. So debit expenses. So DE, right? It starts with the DE. D is always debit expenses. So you know what they like, what are expenses? It's very simple, right? Expenses. And I like I said, somebody get confused with expenses and buying an asset, I'll get there. Okay. The first thing is you should know always debit the expenses. If you, if, you, if you went to school and studied BCom back in India, um, you know, you studied the Gupta books and Bhagavati books and you know, all the Pillai books, they have nominal account, real account and personal account. I'm telling you, even today I didn't get this. So I found a way. Now this, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so debit the expenses, okay? So you know what are expenses? Overheads, rental, stationary, uh, depreciation, and uh, distribution expenses, fixed allowances, overheads, uh, variable expenses, uh, interest charges, uh, broker's commission, incentives, um, whatnot, fuel, insurance, um, whatnot. Those are expenses as you know. When they incur, you debit them, okay? Now this is called credit right? Credit. 
So what do you credit here? Credit? Revenue. Right. CR stands for credit revenue, right? Which is your income. It could be miscellaneous income, operational income, broker's income, incentives earned, cash discounts earned. Anything is an income, correct? The moment you find something that's like a revenue that looks like an income, you credit it, correct? Make sense? Yeah. Right. Now, the next item is AP and AR. Okay. So when you incur an expense, the offsetting should be credit. Correct. When you, when you incur something, when you buy something, then offsetting should be credit. Correct. Because that's how the double entry system works. Correct. Okay. So your AP accounts payable, which is your liabilities, right? What is this? What is accounts payable? The bills which we have to pay. It's a liability, right? Right. So this is also a called vendor, right? It's also called vendor. So this always credit. Vendor is always credit. Account, vendor is accounts payable, right? Accounts payable is liability, right? So any liability is always a credit. How do you know, how do you remember vendor is always a credit? How do you know vendor is a credit? So how do you know vendor is a credit? So this is how I remember. Um, this actually kind of funny. Um, long time ago, I was teaching a guy from some part of India. He is going to Australia and he came to me to learn SAP. And I did not know accounting at that point of time, but I was teaching the purchase order process, okay? Then I was trying to create a purchase order and then trying to post an invoice and then um, I was not sure about the accounting entry, but I see in the system, I did not really see what is debit and credit. Then by mistake, I told him, uh, see now your expenses and this is the AP account and it's debit. Then guess what? This guy said, no J vendor is credit. Is that's what he said. Okay. Um, I still, <coughs> so I still remember that. So he said always vendor is credit. Right, so he, he told me that I remember after that, I always remember vendor is credit, okay? Um, it's kind of funny, but all my people I've taught, um, they know that when I say vendor, they say credit. You could see that, right? In the WhatsApp group, I'll see people will say the same thing. So when you credit the vendor, vendor AP is credit, what is debit? Then what is, a, what is AR? Accounts receivable. Hmm? Accounts receivable. Right. So if AP is credit, accounts receivable is? Asset. So if, if, if a vendor is credit, what is accounts receivable is? Debit. So in essence, this is the four things that you have to remember. The rest all is very easy. The rest all derived, okay? The rest all is derived, okay? So here you know, debit all the expenses. D stands for debit expenses. CR stands for credit the revenue, right? And then like I said, vendor is credit, right? Vendor is credit. Vendor is what? Credit. Vendor credit. is what? Vendor credit. is what? Vendor is credit, right? So if vendor is credit, the opposite of vendor is customer, that is a debit. 
Okay. Having said that, accounts payable is a vendor which you credit. That means all the liabilities is also credit, which is uh, what Jay we did here. Jay which Jay is what we did here. Right? The share capital is always credit because it's a liability. Sorry, Santicha, you are saying something? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, can you, do you have an example uh, for this vendor being uh, credit? Future bill. You debit the machinery and credit AP, right? Is it what you're asking for? Yeah, uh, like uh, vendor uh, is credit, right? How uh, do you have any examples with you? Any examples, what do you mean? Like how does a vendor become credit to the company? When you see, um, well, I think you're, well, you just remember vendor is credit, right? Okay, okay. You see, the whole point of this exercise is um, I really wanted to, um, I know people get really confused with what is to be debit, what to credit, but I'm trying to teach you a very rudimentary way of remembering things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I could definitely tell you why we are debiting and crediting, right? <laughs> this exercise is not for that. Okay. okay, I'm trying to give you a small, in you know, an easier way to remember um, what you basically, it very, very, very simple. Um, these are the fundamental things that you remember, right? So far clear? Yeah. Not useful? Anybody think this is just useless? Good, Jay, thanks. Anybody? it's uh, helping me a lot so the one thing you should remember is um like i said all my people that have learned um vendor is credit that's one thing you should remember okay this is all derived so now let's derive this okay let's derive what else we can derive if debit the expenses pretty much all the expenses are debit okay all the all the revenues are credit now let's say the credit you sold something to a customer okay when you sold something to the customer, then the accounting entry is, what's the accounting entry when you sell something to the customer? From here, can you, somebody tell me? Customer account debit to All right. uh, sales account. Right. Is that right? Najaf, is that correct? Yes. Munsi, is it right? Yes, sir. Correct. So based on this, this is correct, right? So when you make a sales, when you post a sales, let's say the guy returns the sales. Sales returns. Okay, that's the sales returns, right? It happens all the time. I mean, sometimes. If you regularly shop in Costco, you know what I'm talking about. So sales returns. What's the entry for this? Sales return debit to customer. Can somebody, what's the accounting entry for this? Uh, whom should I pick? Vanita. I'm not sure. Good, good for you. <laughs> um, who else? Uh, Harman, you? Um, I'm thinking I would credit the customer and debit the sales this time because it's a return. Exactly, right? So when you post a sales, you make this entry. When you reverse the sales, you just reverse it, right? Correct? I see the whole point I'm trying to do here is I only have to remember this. There is all I can derive, right? Actually, in a matter of fact, you only remember this. There is all derived. Okay. Is it right? 
now when you sell something, same thing, when you purchase something, okay? When you purchase from vendor, what's accounting entry, Shaws? Credit the vendor. Exactly, you will never forget this, right? Vendor credit, right? Yeah. Credit vendor. And then debit what? AP. Come on, man. Inventory. This Inventory. is Shas, hold on. This is a this is already AP, right? This all this is already AP, right? So when you buy something, you credit the vendor, and what are what are you buying? This is already AP. Yeah, inventory. David. Inventory or assets. Asset. Assets. Or accounts receivable. Who's that? Nichef. Nichef, this is vendor, man. Where the accounts receivable come into play? Yeah, asset or so what do you debit expenses, right? So you credit the vendor, what is it typically you buy? You buy an inventory, you buy an asset, or you also pay for expenses, right? Right, right. Right, your company uh, pays to IBM or SAP America for consulting services. Let's say half a million dollars per annum, whatever it is, right? That's an expense which is debit, debit expenses, and debit asset, right? So, okay. So now you're returning the, to the vendor. Returning goods. And what's an accounting entry for this? Debit the vendor and credit the inventory. Inventory assets because now you are sending it back, right? Make sense? Yeah. So far clear. So when you debit an inventory, what happens to inventory? Increases. Exactly. So asset increases. Okay, you should remember this. When you debit an asset, debit an inventory, it increases. Make sense? <clears throat> so whenever you buy an asset, inventory, raw material, okay, you debit it because it's going up. Another way of remembering things is when something goes up on your asset side, you debit it. When something goes on your asset side, you debit it, right? Debit jewelry. Debit what? Jewelry. Debit land and buildings, right? Debit the piece of land I bought back in, in India for some time ago, for example, right? This is how you remember things. Debit, right? Debit my house. Credit my mortgage, which is payable. So far clear? Yeah. Yeah. Monsi? Yes. Okay, so vendor, so this is all you should remember, okay? Okay. So the rest all you could derive this. You can pretty much derive pretty much in any accounting entry. If somebody tells you, um, you know, I'm paying broker's commission. Okay, you're paying broker's commission. What does it mean? You're paying broker's commission, which means it's a liability you're paying now. It used to be a liability, right? So your liability should debit. Okay. So pretty much this is how you evolve your accounting brain. So if you remember this, these three things. So you could pretty much, you know, think about um, any accounting entries. You don't have to be, you can just pretty much think in, you know, your common, use your common sense and um, see what you see in your day-to-day -day life and evolve from there. Okay, Sintija. 
Yes, sir. <sighs> okay, great. Um, next thing is, uh, we have five minutes more. Like I said, um, so we had to, we also should know what is an expense and what is an asset. Okay, so this is a scenario you should like give to everybody. Okay, so let's say um, you are buying an um, machinery. Okay, you're running a plan, you have a plan, you're building a plan, you're buying a machinery. Okay, so this machinery is available in China not in US, so you are importing the machinery from China, okay? So the machinery cost, $10,000, okay? And then shipping, you pay, right? Shipping cost that you pay, let's say $1,000, okay? Now before I forgot, I'm gonna remember this here. A shipping cost a thousand dollars then because it's going to be shipped and you pay for insurance let's say you pay one thousand dollars insurance okay so what's the cost of this now twelve thousand dollars okay so when the mission comes here on board on in us when it reaches you already spent two thousand dollars right and then the machine comes to your store, sorry, from to your, to, your, to, your, to your warehouse, and then you need to prepare the place to install the machine, okay? Installation cost. Let's say you spend $500, okay? Make sense? And then, now the guy is the, the machinery person is saying that, no, we can't just like that use it. You just have to paint it first. Okay, so you're gonna put yeah, one coat of primer. which is, let's say, cost about $500. Now, what's the total cost of the machine now? $13,000. So you are putting this machine into use, okay? And then after end of the first year, the machine depreciates. Um, you guys know how the machine, how the assets depreciates? Anybody knows? Um, um, you, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so different companies have different methods um, how they want to, um, you know, um, do depreciation for their machinery. So some would just say like, you know, over 12 years mm -hmm. from zero or... Um, Yeah, so reduces by like 20% every year or something like that. Yeah, there, is, there are two common, actually there are three common methods. Uh, one is declining balance. Other one is straight line depreciation. And then next one is uh, units of consumption. So declining balance is basically you said this machine is going to depreciate in uh, 20 percentage every year. Okay, that's called declining balance. This is usually by percentage. By what? Percentage. By percentage, by percentage, by percentage, by percentage. State and depreciation is basically by, say by number of years. You will say, you know what? Uh, I'm buying this machinery, it's going to depreciate in 10 years by number of years, okay? So which is called straight line means you take this $10,000 and divide by 20, divide by 10 years, which is a useful life of years, and then you depreciate that period every, that money, that, that cost every year. So units of consumption is basically based on the running time of the machine, which is kind of very complicated. There's a lot of manual work to be involved. Make sense? Declining balance with percentage. I said this machine every year I detect 20 percentage. Okay? It could be five years, maybe less. Right? Laptops. Laptops are five years. And by the way, who decides all this by number of years? IRS. Every year, IRS, um, they publish, right, the depreciation number of 
uh, years, depreciation turns almost every assets to the companies, okay? They also make the changes. So they, they, they publish which assets, which type of assets, right? So machinery, this machinery, that machinery, this car, laptops, depreciates and by, by number of years, right? Like solar panels, they also depreciates. Now if solar, if, um, if the American, the federal wants to spend uh, more on, um, if they want to encourage people to go and buy uh, solar panels, okay? They will reduce the depreciation. They said, you know what? You can depreciate in two years. So people will go and buy it. <laughs> they write up all the expenses, right? So they use the depreciation policies and terms in order to, you know, keep the economy, you know, growing or keep the economy at, you know, um, monitoring and things like this. Car, let's say the car industry is, is, is declining. Then they will announce new depreciation methods and said, if you buy a car, you know, Mercedes Benz, GXL, whatever it is, more than $50,000, then you can depreciate this car um, 30% in the first one year. Then people will go and buy car. It will boost the car sales. So that's one of the factors. Great. So this is for this is how it depreciates. De depreciates, okay. <coughs> so before we close the call, we also touch upon OPEX and CAPEX. Now, so we have thirteen thousand dollars worth of cost. So after one year, depreciates. One year depreciation. Let's say ten percentage dollars. Okay. So what's the net book value now? Eleven thousand seven hundred. Is this right? So the net book value is eleven thousand seven hundred end of the year. Is this is this right? I think I I say this is yes. wrong. Tell me why? Why this is wrong? Why it's wrong? Mm -hmm. well, I think it's right. I think it's right. Because that's the depreciation um, figure I was deducting it from the original cost of the machine. Okay, that's why you have this OPEX and CAPEX come into picture. Okay, what is, what is CAPEX? That's capital expense. Okay. And what is OPEX? Operating expense. Operational, operating. Okay. So what's the difference between OPEX and CAPEX? Anybody? Harman? So are like CAPEX, are they like one off? Mm -hmm. One like one of expenditure and operative is something that like is reoccurring maybe. Mm, one time investment. No, this is. A... Okay, that would generate future revenues, future operation revenues. Yeah. Okay, so if you buy a machinery, why are you buying machinery? It's a capital expenditure, right? You spend one time and then it is going to run for 10 years and then it is going to put into production and it will help the operations, correct? Yeah. That's called capital expenditure. Very commonly term used as CapEx. Now, what is OPEX? OPEX, sorry. OPEX. It is a day-to-day -day operational expenses, right? Make sense? Is that right? Yeah. Day to day operation expenses. You were where you were your rental, you were overheads and you were whatnot. Um insurance, these are operation expenses. Okay. Now you after one year, come back here. Somebody wants to buy the machine. Okay? Your customer, let's say you don't want this machine anymore, and you're switching the business, you want to sell. Okay, so now you want to sell the 
sell this machinery. How much you can sell this machinery for? Nine thousand. How much? So how much you can sell the machinery for? Somebody is asking, and you want to price it. You can sell it for anything, like even thirteen thousand, if you want. But what is a reasonable price? I mean, why would you? Why would you? Why would you? Why would he pay thirteen thousand dollars? Right? He could basically yeah. import the same machine for yeah. I mean, yeah. brand new, and it's already depreciated, right? Yeah. So eleven thousand seven hundred. Okay, let's. Is it right, Kamala? <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe yes, but um, maybe in eleven thousand seven hundred we can reduce the utilization. Which is already reduced, right? One year. That's the way. It's already depreciated. That's the way and tear of the machine. Yeah. Yeah. It's depreciation. Depreciation. It's already reduced. Yeah. So here, here's very important. Come. You know, you guys have to think like an accountant, um, not an accountant, it's more like, more, like, more like a common sense. You should know what is a OPEX and CAPEX. Let's take a scenario, right? Why would you spend for $11,700, but this $11,700 includes shipping cost, okay? Why would this guy would pay for shipping cost, okay? Maybe he can. Let's say this machine is not available locally. The only way you could buy this machine in the US is from from China. Okay, which means regardless he buys from you or buy from somebody else, he has still has to pay shipping cost, correct? Then he would be willing to pay for the shipping cost, correct? Yeah. Right, if somebody is selling locally, he doesn't, when you went to buy from China, maybe now this machine is available in the US, he's not going to pay for the shipping cost, right? Right? Can you come and say, you know what? I spent money, I imported from China. Why did you import from China? I, I could buy from next door. I mean, you know, locally from some other region here. <laughs> Correct? Or maybe he would say, you spent so much money. I could, if I have to buy today, I will ship it for free. I could make the argument, right? <laughs> yeah, we can. So this basically depends, right? You. You can add to this cost, you can add, maybe not, I don't know. This is really negotiable, okay? However, this is just your OPEX, OPEX. Okay, if you need the mission, you have to spend this money. Can you capitalize this? Which means, can you add this cost to the mission? Maybe or may not. That's why the corporate asset management team, they sit there and discuss. Can they capitalize this or not? When they say capitalize, can we add this cost to the machine price? So the cost, the net book value of the machine, when they capitalize or not, right? That's what they think about. They are, those are the discussions they will have. So let's say this is OPEX. Now insurance, why would they pay for insurance? This insurance for, for me, right? It covers just for me. When I sell the machine, insurance is gone, right? Now I drive a car, I pay insurance every month, $200. When I sell the car, do you think I can charge you for insurance too that I paid? The insurance is to protect me, right? Why would the car, why would the, the customer, the buyer would pay for you the insurance that you spend for your own protection? Make sense? Hello? Yeah, that makes sense, Shay. Yes. So now this is also OPEX, operation expenditure. This is not your capital expenditure. So now you can only sell this machine for $10,000. Now comes the installation cost. Now installation cost is the same thing. So you install so that you could reap the benefits of the machine. Once you decided to sell, the guy is gonna come and dismantle this machine and take away, okay, right? The installation is not going to take it, okay? Installation is to install the machine. He's going to take this machine to his warehouse and he reinstall. He's going to spend $500 again, maybe, right? So he's not going to pay for this, correct? 
this is also opex right yeah now comes yeah. to the painting maybe anytime you buy a machine you may have to put a one coat of primer before you put this machine into use that's arguable even then he buys a brand new machine okay he still has to spend some money to install he, he still has to pay some money right so this could could be a capex basically anytime anybody buys a machine they still have to spend this 500 dollars to paint this now i'm going to add this to the cost of the machine this is called capitalization okay so capitalization is something you add to the capital cost. Make sense? That's called capitalization. So these are the very common words that you hear every time, all the time, when you work in a consulting world, especially SAP FICO. So you should know, think about this when you buy a car, when you buy pretty much anything, when you shed the money out, you all have to think about like an accountant, like a finance manager, okay? So this could be capex. Now, what's my cost? 10,500. I'm removing this guy. I'm removing this guy. These are opex. So I'm just adding $500 to my capex. Maybe out of this, I'm capitalizing maybe $250, okay? Now this will be 10,250. Make sense? Because I already used this paint, right? The paint is already faded or withered away. Make sense? Oh, David, uh, for that we are in depreciation, right? So we can... this, yeah, this is depreciation. Now, out of this 1,000, 10,250 is my actual capital cost, okay? So my machine cost is only 10,250. Make sense? Fifty percent is capitalized. which is $250. So far clear? Won't see? Yes, it is clear. Now, what's my depreciation now? Let's say this depreciate 10 years, okay? What's my first year depreciation? It will be $1,925. Okay. This is my, now, this is my depreciation, one year depreciation, which is minus. My net book value is the end of the first year is 9,225. Make sense? Now, if I want to sell to the customer, this is my base price. <coughs> because this is what shows in SAP as my net book value of the assets. You could sell it for more. If you sell it for more, then you get a in profit on the sale of fixed assets. If you sell it for less, you have a loss on sale of fixed assets. If you have a loss, where would that go? Is it debit or credit? If you have a loss on sale of fixed assets, when let's say you are selling this for $9,000 and you have a $225 loss, okay? Debit expenses, man, right? It's an expense, right? You're two, two, yes. If you're selling for $9,000, 225 is an expense. It's a debit expenses, okay? So this is what you should really understand, okay? There's something called OPEX and CAPEX. When you buy a jewelry, that's a CAPEX, okay? When you pay for the locker fees that you put into the bank, that's an OPEX, make sense? And every six months, you take the jewelry out and send it for polishing and you spend $300, that is a OPEX. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now you understand, Vanita? 
Uh, my internet is really bad, Jay. So half of the things I'm not able to hear. Now I heard it and it makes sense. Okay, so sorry. it's like half of the things. I'm I'm really sorry. I don't know this internet. I'm using it for the first time and uh, it's really bad. Okay. Kamal is Kamal is right. Yes, Vijay. But I think like uh, you know when you're uh, using it for the maintenance. So would that be your capital expenditure because it's a maintenance of the capital asset? Where? Line item, which line? No, no, no. When you were explaining, like, you know, you buy the jewelry. Right. It's a capital expenditure. And when you pay the locker fees, it's a operative expenditure. Right. But when you send it out for polishing or the maintenance, so it's the maintenance of the capital asset. No, uh, so let's say you have a car, you go an oil change. That's a maintenance, it's an expenses, right? Yeah. Yep. So you cannot take, you cannot go, when you sell the car to somebody, you cannot say, you know what, I change oil four times a year. <laughs> you got to pay for that, right? So you don't have to maintain this. Why you maintain this? You don't have to maintain this, right? The gold is gold. You're going to sell it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, uh, I also have the same confusion. Like it will be considered as a maintenance expense, right? Which one? Uh, that like if you are uh, like yeah car oil yeah be... that that's opex right okay it's expenses it's a, it's a, it's expenses it's not an it's not a capital expense it's a it's a profit and loss statement okay. Okay, so far clear. So I just quickly review. Um, so this is, a th this is the three, this is the entry that I believe you should remember, the rest are derived, right? DE, David expenses. Okay, A for Apple, B for Ball, C for Cat, D for debit, E for expenses, right? A for Apple, B for Ball, C for credit, R for revenue, credit revenue, okay? And then vendor is credit. If you forget what the vendor is, just post in the WhatsApp group, they will, everybody will tell you vendor is credit. Okay, this is, this is just opposite, just derived, okay? So, um, and then here we have this balance sheet, p &L statement and trial balance. We talked about what's a trial balance. And then we talked about what's a balance sheet item. And then these are liabilities and assets. Um, how do you differentiate assets? Anything that holds a future value, right? Which means you put into use and generate revenue, generate operational income, operational expenses. Those are called assets. Then you can be liquidated. You can sell it to somebody. Okay? So those are assets and liabilities. Then we talked about expenses and then we talked about income. This goes into your PL statement, which is also called income statement. And we talked about 3M, which is direct expenses, and we have indirect expenses and overheads and so on. Okay. And then we talked about this, we gave this example where we discussed about how you differentiate CapEx versus OPEX. Okay. OPEX is a day to day operation expenditure, like maintenance expenses operational expenses, right? CapEx is a capital expenditure, which is basically, you know, you build something, you know, um, companies implement SAP, that's a capital expenditure, right? So a company spends $50 million, give to IBM to implement SAP project, right? And then $50 million is a loss. It's not a loss. They write it off every year. Correct. Their revenue, their profit one, it could be like hundred million dollars, but they spend fifty million dollars to implement SAP. What does it mean? They, it's a loss. No, they only amortize. They take, let's say, um, five thousand dollars every year and remaining put this in a balance sheet. So they will only show five thousand dollars as an operational as a as a as a expenses towards the SAP implementation. The rest they will keep it as an accrued 
or amount they will just keep it as a capital cost okay? research and development there's a capital expenditure r and d cost r and d expenses okay because it is going to generate future revenue they spend 50 million dollars for the r and d they found a product that is not an expense because they're going to use it for future revenue make sense so this example also we saw Yeah, so in a digest this information, uh, this is very important. Um, like I said, this is very essential. I try to summarize in a very more, more meaningful way, um, which makes a lot of sense now, which I believe for you guys to be able to understand and differentiate the financial statement versions and expenses, income, assets, liabilities, OPEX, CAPEX, and so on, okay? Now, um, when you talk about something any transaction make sure you put them in one of those buckets okay so there's no loose talk so what i want you to do is obviously i'll share this video go through this take notes write it down um digest this information as much as you can it will come a long way okay and